We've got Ron in Chicago. Thanks for waiting. Hey, what's going on? We're doing a TV show. What's going on with you? Uh, I'd like to talk about in, uh, intelligent design and uh, evolution, specifically uh, a claim that you've made in the past about evolution being a fact in the context of uh, common descent. Well, what I said was that evolution is a fact, that there have been observed changes. Now, common descent, um, I happen to think, is well supported by the evidence, but mm -hmm. the common descent is not the same thing. So, a theory explains a fact. So, you have a fact, which is the diversity of life on Earth. That is just a fact. And we also know that it's a fact that things change over time. Evolution by natural selection is the theory that explains that. And when it comes to an issue of common descent, um, things like chromosome two and every of uh, the uh, and all the other elements that go together to show that the best explanation is common ancestry. But hmm. what what did you want to ask? And and also, why are you calling us? Yes, I, I was I was curious as to why uh, when you posed the question, when I was reading off of the uh, the screen uh, the call screeners notes, why you would call this show specifically for that question regarding evolution rather than approaching someone that perhaps studies in that field, things of that sort. Oh, I speak to molecular biologists and biochemists on a regular basis, offline, offline, uh, online, and so on. But I'm specifically calling this show because I've heard Matt on a regular basis talking about evolution as if it is fact. And in the context of change happening, I would agree with that. Change happening, we would all agree with that. Great, so we agree uh, that it's a fact. Answer, so we agree that it's a so fact. It's evolution, but that's not what you said in the context of the discussion. Well, I can't, I don't know what I said. I don't know, I don't know what well, I've I said in the past. I have the clips on my computer. I, I, I don't. Have the, I have the clip saved on the computer, so I know what you Okay, said. then Ron, email me the clip. Or, I mean, could, could you at least have the conversation now based on what I'm actually saying? I'm not going to, I'm not going well, to say. I'm trying to. Okay, I'm go trying ahead. right now. So in the context of what you're saying right now, I would agree with that 100 percent. That cool. change happens, even, the, so is it, even to the extent of causing something that might be perceived to be new. For example, the ability to, di to digest nylonase or mutations that might cause right here or mutations that might allow us to digest uh, milk. So, so since, we're, these, it, new, since we're in, changes, Ron, since we're in agreement. I'm sorry, go ahead. Since mm -hmm. we're in agreement, what's the issue? <laughs> No, we're not in agreement. We're not. We're not. I don't know you why just, you're that you just said you agreed with what I just said. And no, in numerous discussions in the past, when you're talking about evolution, when you're describing evolution in the context of the argument, you're talking about small incremental changes leading on to new complexities through millions of years. It's that specific claim of that mechanism's creative power that I'm calling it to question right now. Okay. And my question to you is, do you have something where I said that this is a fact Yes, yeah, so I've got about 13 different clips from different videos where you made that statement That's amazing. on my laptop at home. That's amazing because I'm one of the people who, uh, who's probably most cautious with their words, um, especially when it comes to issues like this. Um, so by all means, put together an email, point me to those clips. I'll be happy to look through them. And if you're correct, I'll retract stuff. Well, I'm absolutely willing to do so, but mm -hmm. just for the sake of my argument, are you willing to talk about what evolution can do here in this discussion? I'm not a biologist. What I can do is talk about my, understa my understanding of evolutionary theory, but I'm also wondering why it's particularly relevant. Because you, you understand that there are religious people who accept the, the science behind evolution as well, right? Oh, yeah, I understand that for a while. Okay. But I think that it's relevant because even though it's, the same, it's relevant in the same way that intelligent design is relevant, because even though it doesn't necessarily intend to prove any specific belief in God, the implications of it happen to be religious friendly. In, in the same way with evolution, people that end up being converted or, or lose, they end up losing their faith if they mm -hmm. end up agreeing with any information suggesting that common descent is true. So no, 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 Ron, you just acknowledged that there are plenty of Christians out there who accept common descent. Right. Okay, but and there are like plenty. There know. are plenty of. If, as long as there, this isn't a religious issue about whether or not you accept common descent, then it's an issue about whether or not you accept the evidence for common descent. I happen to accept the evidence for common descent. I would not and do not think that I have claimed that common descent is a fact. 
Uh, what I've claimed is that this, that the evidence points to this as the most reasonable conclusion based on the available evidence and that it's incredibly strong and that intelligent design, on the other hand, isn't science and doesn't offer us anything. Well, right, but we both understand that uh, the, whether you're a theist, a pantheist, or an atheist, there are different subset descriptions under that position. So not all atheists have the same perception of information. Correct. Like not, all, not all theists have the same perception. So even though it doesn't necessarily lead somebody to atheism or, um, or to, to Christianity, whether we talk about intelligent design or evolution, the implications of this information d does tend to lead certain individuals either towards atheism away from it. Which has absolutely no bearing on whether or not it's correct and true. And when intelligent design offers I never said it did. And, and I never said it did. Okay, then I don't understand what your point is, because basically what you've said is, hey, there's this theory, and some people accept it, and some people don't. And while it's not necessarily tied to religion, in some cases there are people who accept it, and this leads them away from their religion. Mm -hmm. So what? That's just well, the I facts of life. Well, right. I came in here for the, with the direct purpose to get into that evidence for what is true. Well, then you need so to go talk why, to scientists here, because that's not my them. job, nor is it anything that I'm particularly interested in doing. Well, I think you're being a bit unfair here, Matt, because why? you're also not a philosopher as well, but you talk about philosophy on a regular basis. How do you know and I'm not a philosopher? Because I've listened to you speak and you don't have a degree in philosophy. You, oh, so you have to have a degree in philosophy to be a philosopher. No, no, no. Where did the first degree. philosophers get their degrees? <laughs> the, the point of the matter is, Matt, is that you speak with a lot of authority on I biology. Speak, I speak and about, no, no, I don't speak with much authority on biology. As a matter of fact, I'm consistently pointing out when people call in the show that the issue of evolution is not one that's relevant to whether or not a God exists, that I'm not an expert on it, but and it then is. they want to argue with me anyway, so I tell them what I do understand and what my views are about it. That's completely separate, because if they're of these two fields, biological sciences and philosophy, there is one in which I am pretty strongly versed and another that I'm not. Okay, well, that's what the problem is, Matt. I mean, you seem to... Like, when you're talking to some people, it seems like, and I'm not trying to say this to be disrespectful to you, but it seems like when you're talking to some people that don't know about the topic, you'll make statements like, okay, evolution is fact. No. When you're talking about common sense. Okay. But I'm in here, I'm trying to be respectful just to have a discussion with you. And I feel like you're just, you're, you're trying to avoid having the discussion with me. Okay, what is the discussion you want to have? Because if you want to have a discussion that I'm not interested in, we're not having it. Okay, so, all right, so you, all right. <laughs> I think this is ridiculous, but how about we keep the heat on me then about intelligent design? Would that be better? I don't, I don't need to put any heat on intelligent design. It hasn't met its burden of proof. It is pointless for me to sit around talking about something that hasn't actually offered anything. Uh, well, it has. You know what the argument of intelligent design is, right? Uh, there is an argument for intelligent design? Intelligent design is an abductive argument. I understand that. Based on, okay. So, I mean, it, it, why are you trying to say proving and all this other stuff? What are you trying to get at when you're saying that intelligent design hasn't proven something? It ha because it, because it hasn't. So, it, when we're talking about, for example, the biological sciences, there are actual scientists who go out and find in, uh, evidence, who assess and evaluate that evidence, who submit it up for peer review, and who construct a scientific model that serves as the best current explanation of that information. Science, as I've repeatedly said for well over a decade now, doesn't make proclamations of truth, which is why I don't believe you when I say, when you claim that you have all these examples of me stating that this is just a fact. What you probably have are examples of me saying that evolution is a fact and that the theory of evolution by natural selection is the theory that attempts to explain that fact. Um, because that is pretty much my standard answer on that. But when you talk about intelligent yep. design, you don't have anybody who's doing any evidence. You have, you have the wedge document, you have the, the Institute for Creation Research and other organizations that are similar to this who are, instead of providing evidence for their position, merely trying to poke holes in the current model and failing to do so. Yeah, that's what I, well, always, uh, that's what I always found yeah, so interesting said. about the um, intelligent design argument because it was mostly, seems to be a lot of it, most of, most of, wow, 
Well, what are words? Yeah. <laughs> it mostly seems to be centered around poking holes, like you said, in evolution, not necessarily uh, coming up with evidence to substantiate that hypothesis in and of itself. And so um, it just, it was interesting to me that poking holes in evolution, that will do nothing to actually mm -hmm. further the substantiation of the claim that the theory of, or the, shall I say, the hypothesis of intelligent design is correct. Well, I would say, I mean, you guys said a lot there, and I'm going to try to respond to each point that you made as best as I can. But the first thing that you said about uh, peer review, there is a database on the intelligent design website if people want to go look at their different articles that they publish against evolution and, and attempting to make an argument for intelligent design. But I would say that because this is an, a, a causal argument, we do not need a peer-reviewed article to tell us whether or not the implications of the data that intelligent design is calling into question is true because one of the purposes for the peer-review process is to help to increase scientific knowledge. Intelligent design is a causal argument calling into question previous knowledge in the past. That's what it's, it's attempting to do so. So the, the very fact that it is calling on previous knowledge in the past it's, uh, it would be making a causal argument based on knowledge appealing to, you know, just basic information that all, all mankind that is exposed to modern society knows and understands. So because I, mankind, I will give $20 are, to anybody who takes that last clip from him and produces <laughs> anything that makes sense or is substantive about it. That was as, as tap dancey as I've ever heard. Because to me, it's What do you mean? Okay. My, my, my point was that intelligent design isn't actually doing, sci the intelligent design community isn't actually doing scientific research that would support their claim. And your argument is that doesn't matter oh, because- I haven't gotten to that point yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what point you were I even have... responding to then. I was responding to, you made a lot of statements and I was trying to respond to each one of them. You mentioned peer reviewed and I gave you my response to peer reviewed, but I haven't gotten to that point yeah, yet. Yeah, and I don't, I, under I, don't, I don't understand how your argument uh, in any way removes the value of peer review. We're not saying that peer review is the end all be all. There are mistakes made in everything, including in journals. Um, but what I'm saying is the peer review process where people set out to uh, replicate and confirm results. I mean, we know that these things go are, are horrible, but they're the best that we've got. And you're basically saying that you don't have any need for them. No, no, no. We, we have need for the peer review process. Then That's why are you? Why why has the intelligent design saying, community gone out and created its own journals, in order to claim well, no. that they have peer review? They've created their own journals because they're not getting peer reviewed um, in actual respectable journals that have been around. Well, I'll get to that right now in a second. But you made another point that you just responded to me uh, with okay. beforehand. So I'd like to respond to that if I can. I do not agree that, um, well, it I guess it would be both abiogenesis and evolution because you have to have an established system before any of these things that intelligent design is talking about can you know, end up happening. So why, why why are you rolling abiogenesis? Evolution. But what, I'm, Ron, what I'm saying is Run. Why are you rolling abiogenesis into this? It's not under discussion. Okay. Well, if you don't want me to talk about abiogenesis, what I'm about to say is still relevant to evolution. I do not agree with the fact that they are trying to investigate to see if any of these components can actually happen through an evolutionary process. I think that a, what, a lot of the things what they're doing um, is they're trying to manufacture results or just, they're more so just comparing homologies and declaring that one. So uh, you think the bulk of science, the you think the bulk of science that has been done on evolutionary theory is just scientists intentionally manufacturing <laughs> evidence to support the model? No, what I'm saying is that there's absolutely no evidence at all. There's been no, no testing, no experimentation showing that any amount of incremental steps and changes can build the specific structures that intelligent design calls into question, like turbines, motors, and codes that are found inside of the cell. Are, are you, no are you making a... Mechanisms can accumulate to those changes. Are you making a distinction between macroevolution and microevolution such that you would accept macroevolution but not microevolution? Well, some scientists I talk to, they don't like it when I try to muddy the waters and talk about the differences between micro and micro because they say that there's no distinction. But I'm, what I'm saying is that I, I'm, asking you if, I'm asking you, Ron, it was a simple question. I'm asking you if you see a distinction and are you willing to accept one and not the other? Well, do I see a distinction of changes happening? Yes, I see a distinction of changes happening, but I see absolutely no evidence that these 
small changes or alterations like in proteins or whatever can accumulate over to the uh, to the specific structures that intelligent design is calling its question. There's nothing indicating that that can actually happen. Okay, well, I, I don't know what to tell you then because it seems to me that you're just okay. saying this can't happen when the bulk of scientists who actually spend their life studying this disagree with you. So why don't you talk to them and not me? Okay, well, saying that a bunch of scientists agree with you is not really evidence that, that suggests that it can actually you, happen. You're correct, but you know what else isn't evidence? Saying, I don't accept the bulk of what scientists have to say about this. Uh, if there are two people sitting in the room and one of them says, here's my thing, and I yes, I'm going against the massive, overwhelming majority of scientific experts in this field, and the other person is sitting there saying, uh, here's my model, and I'm going with the overwhelming majority, which one do you put your money on? You put the one the money on the one who's got the evidence. I, I agree. That's what I'm trying to question I agree. Right you now. put so the money on the one, one with the evidence. evidence. And so, which one of those two is more likely to have the evidence in any given scenario? The one where the majority of scientific experts in a field are in agreement, or the one that is outcast and 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 and, and uh, uh, separate from all that okay. majority? Which one? Again, is again. The one who has the evidence, you cannot sit over your Ron, head. Ron, I asked the question. The majority say something. Ron, make it true. Ron, I asked a question. In almost every situation, if there's a if there's a, a two people standing here, one of which is siding, or one of the of which is a group that consists of the majority, the overwhelming majority of experts in a field, and the other one is an outlier. Most of the time. Which one does the evidence side with? The one who's got the evidence, because in the past, You're done. many people. And if you can't, if you can't answer the question honestly, you don't get to claim I'm I'm dodging your conversation, because I think you're aware, as is everybody else, that most of the time, the reason the majority of scientists and the reason the majority of experts in this field hold a position is because that is where the evidence has led. The other, the other possibility is that the majority of experts in a field have disregarded the evidence in favor of some bias, and that we would have to demonstrate. But when you try to avoid the question of, most likely, where does the evidence rest? I'm not making assertions about absolute certainty or truth or any of that. I'm just talking about a scientific model.